So why do we quit things that can help us? Why do we quit things that can help us? How many of us have started down a path and a journey on some new venture, thing or idea or plan mm -hmm. that we loved what we saw insofar as the results that this certain decision or path could produce. And then all of a sudden we, we discover the amount of work it takes mm. to produce those results. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, it's easy to lose focus, to lose vision, and to not consider it worth it. Yeah. And I asked this question to the Lord and asked him, why, why do people quit when if they kept going, they would get the fruits of their labor if they didn't quit? Mm -hmm. And he led me to literally randomly. I just like, Father, lead me to the right place in the Bible that uh, would speak to this. Mm -hmm. So I just like physically flipped through a Bible, opened it up. The first verse I saw was Luke 8. Verses 13 and 14. It says, But those on the rocky places are the ones who, when they hear, accept the word with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a season and in a time of testing fall away. Mm -hmm. Now that which fell into the thorns are those who were hearing. But as they go along the way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. And they do not ma bear mature fruit. And then it goes on in verse 15, but the seed in the good soil are those with a praiseworthy and a good heart who have heard the word and hold it fast and bear fruit with patient mm -hmm. endurance. Mm -hmm. And so when we, for those of you who are Christians and believers, your, your, your thought process might immediately go towards all things spiritual and salvation and eternal life. But there's a principle in there that applies to all other things that you put your hand to the plow on. Mm -hmm. And the it, it depending and the parable is about the soil, not necessarily about the seed. Notice you'll notice in each category the seed is fine. Mm -hmm. the seed is the seed that this sower was planting was good. It's where the seed landed mm -hmm. that determined whether it's going to produce a crop. And so so many of us, maybe this is you, maybe you can relate. You want to become a great leader. You want to get married. You want to start a business. Or you want to do this. You want to do that. Exciting. We. Mm -hmm. And, but then comes the, the test of commitment. Mm -hmm. The test of consistency and faithfulness. And doing things that are hard. Maybe. Yeah, doing things that are hard. Yeah. And you may get triggered in the process. Or you have to figure something out that you don't know how to crack the code on this. And, mm -hmm. And when that happens, it's so easy to get distracted. Mm -hmm. And not just distracted, but the distractions look like they're more important than the goal you originally were on. Yeah. And so the distraction looks so big and, and noble and right. And we fail to identify what's a distraction mm -hmm. and what is legitimately important. Yeah. One of the biggest distractions I found for people that want to get married is I want to build this business. I want to get out of debt or I want, I, I want to overcome this addiction or I want to earn more money. Sounds great. Sounds good. Yeah, you want to be a good provider and all of that. However, once you realize that you need a wife, especially if you're a guy, you need a wife to help you do those things mm -hmm. you got the thing you got it turned around mm -hmm. and when you don't re when you don't recognize that you need to really fulfill the biggest mission on your life and leave a legacy behind you to pass it on to like abraham isaac and jacob did mm -hmm. that created the nation of israel guess what you can't do it alone you might argue with, argue with me, but I'm going to stand firm on this. Yeah. 
marriage was God's idea, not mm-hmm. yours. Mm-hmm. And yes, you can be complete in the Lord in and of yourself. And it's in that state that you come together to another person who is also in that completeness in the Lord. And then together you fulfill your mission, you create a legacy, you, leave it, you have something to pass on to the next generation. And you're uh, fulfilling God's original commandment in the garden before sin and the fall to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, take dominion and, and exercise the development of take, of ruling and reigning mm-hmm. for eternity, right? Yeah. So you need a wife or a husband to do that. And so don't, don't let the, the distractions of life pop up as, oh, I got to do this first before I get married. Mm-hmm. Well, now, if it's a character issue and you're doing prison worthy, worthy stuff, absolutely. <laughs> like, get your, get your stuff together. Yeah. You know, get, get, a, get, a, get a hold of yourself before the Lord and deal with that stuff. I'm talking about the, the life. The distractions of life. The distractions of life. You're too busy. Well, if you're too busy to work on relationships while you're single, what makes you think you're suddenly going to have more time to work on your relationship once you get married? That's a recipe for disaster and yeah. divorce already. You're already laying the groundwork for a poor relationship and possibly divorce. If you're already so busy that you don't have time to develop relationship skills mm-hmm. or you've deceived yourself into maybe thinking that you're already... Oh, you'll figure it out, or you're you're already confident. Well, my final con- my <laughs> final answer to that would be, what's the fruit? Yeah. If you're still single and you want to be married, that's the fruit. Mm-hmm. So no matter I, how good you think you already are, how much you think you got your stuff in a row, if you're still single and you don't want to be single, that's the fruit. Mm-hmm. It requires humility and laying down ego and pride to recognize that. Okay, I think I'm all this in a bag of chips, but I'm still married. I'm still single, so I must be missing something here. Yeah. What? I guess maybe. What if I'm not actually what I think I am? Yeah. And that's, that's how I was until the age of forty. Yeah. And uh, once I came to the end of my own thinking, I got it all together. No, nope, waiting on God. God's got it all in control until one day God told me he's been waiting on me for 20 years to make a decision and pick one and go find a wife. That was a shock. You, you mean that he wasn't bringing her to you? And, he, didn't uh, even, he didn't even tell me that she's the one. He, told, he, he did tell my wife that I'm her husband, but he didn't tell me that she's my wife. Mm-hmm. For me, I had to step out, pursue take responsibility and recognize that I need a wife to accomplish everything I thought I wanted to accomplish before I get get married. Mm -hmm. And so the things that I wanted to accomplish before getting married all sounded noble and righteous and Mm -hmm. holy and noble. It was all just a distraction. And they were not getting you married. Nope. They actually kept me from getting married because all of a sudden I made the process the goal instead of going after the goal and embracing the process as a part of the journey of going Mm -hmm. there. So that's my final thought on that. Yeah, that's that's very, very good. And believe it or not, we all have those things daily, right? We have to check our soil daily and see, is this bearing fruit? Or do, I, do I need to throw some rocks out of the garden? Yeah. Or do I need to put some compost in there? And, you know, in the, it's interesting to even think of that, right? Compost. You would think that, oh my gosh, why would I do that? I don't want to put that stuff into my dirt. To what if it's going to contaminate things? But it actually makes it better. So, so is, you know, learning about how to take care of your soul, how to take care of soil, which is your soul, and how to bear fruit, which again, we teach that how to get prepared for marriage, how to find the right one, and then how to create a beautiful marriage, epic marriage. So, yeah, very good. So focus on the right things, see where distractions are, and learn to hear from the Lord on those things. Yeah, sometimes discerning God's will 
isn't about waiting on him. It's about digging into his word and looking at what he's already said. Yeah. And then recognizing that taking action is marriage was God's idea. It was his idea that Adam needs a wife mm -hmm. in a state of perfection already. Yeah. God saw that Adam needed a wife. Yeah. And it was a commandment to get married, uh, to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a suggestion. So we always go back to the garden in the beginning, before sin and the fall, to discern God's perfect will and his perfect heart. Mm -hmm. And then we compare the fruits of our lives with what was the original intent. And there you have it. That was God's original heart and plan, his mm -hmm. perfect will. And then we humans find ourselves in various stages of that journey of of experiencing and embracing that. And it's easy to come up with uh, holy and righteous sounding reasons and excuses for or trying to justify it with a cherry picked verse on why we're still experiencing what we're experiencing. Just instead of just, you know what? I don't know as much as I think I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm probably not even scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. And what God says trumps what I think or believe. Yeah, humility mm -hmm. goes along. Requires humility and laying down the ego of pride to admit that what I'm experiencing in life is the sum total of every decision I've ever made. Yeah, Good and it can be changed. Yep. Or change your future, just make different decisions. That's right. Simple. Yeah. Simple comp simple concept, but it requires a walking it out and a commitment to stay the course in order to get what you really want in life. Mm -hmm. I love it. That was good. God bless you until the next message. Yeah.